is so, so good. Oh, I know. I'm going to continue telling you how good he is. <laughs> Thank you for the word, my sister. Um, I just resonate with your word. And, um, you know, the depths of the wells that um, many um, pastors and leaders and um, that have gone um, before you to bring out the word to you, um, you know, we may not see um, the wells that, that has been dug for all of you, um, and the labor that it took, you know, um, from your pastors or, or, you know, whatever leaders, you know, they didn't just get there, you know, to the place they're at. They, they have to be like Joseph. You know, they had a dream. They're excited about the dream. I remember when God told me, you know, I ran. I kind of was more of a Jonah. I ran. Like, what? i rather, you know coming into the ministry and not un understanding, but just being so zealous for the Lord, I was excited about cleaning toilets, okay? I wasn't, like, excited to, like, do anything else or get, get. I, I didn't even think about a gift. I didn't think about, um, you know, a position. I just was like, you know, what kind of labor could I do, you know? And, and I was so excited about um, cleaning the toilets, you know, um, because it, it was like, wow, I get to clean the toilets, and anybody that sits on this toilet, I get to pray over their butts. Because so many people in the church, they got butts, right? <laughs> you know, but this, you know, they can't do this because but, but, and but, you know. And so I got to, um, like, pray over the big butt. And so um, I just, you know, everything that we do is unto the Lord, you know, um, we got to be, we got to have this zealous, we got to have this passion for, and it doesn't matter if you're just cleaning the toilets, or you, you, you coming in and cleaning and vacuuming, or, or, you know, whatever you're doing, do it as all less unto the Lord. I mean, we, we hunger, and we thirst, you know, and we, we boil up with this living water, you know, to go and tell people about Jesus. I, but, you know, the little things that God has already given us, you know, that we can do, do it with all your heart. You know, um, Joseph had a plan in his life. God already had a plan and purpose for him. And I just love the way that it was brought out, you know, and the seasons of his life that he went through. You're going to have seasons. You know, we're like, oh, I just want to go and tell somebody about Jesus. But, you know, the Lord is looking at you and he wants you like, okay, you just... Get cleaned out first. You know, hang, hang with your pastors. Come to church on Sunday so you can learn. You know, renew your mind. The first thing God says we got to do is renew our minds. You know, we can't just get out there and go and tell everybody else and then, you know, go home and then our flesh takes over or on the street in the store and then we're just telling somebody off and the person you just ministered to is in the next line. Because we're so zealous for the, for the gift, but we should be even more compassionate about our Lord and Savior and what he sees in our own personal lives. And so when we work out, you know, our life, when we work out from the inside out what's in us, what is in us? And um, so, you know, Joseph had to go from one um, area of his life, wow, Mr. Big Shot, who do you think you are? Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine Joseph. I mean, I was listening to that. That song came into my, my, my head when you were talking, you know. And it's like, Joseph, like, yeah, I'm Mr. Big Shot. And he's telling his brothers. And then they're like, who do you think you are? You know. And he's like going around just telling all, you know, they go, oh, man. You know, and, and we don't, you know, when you're called, you know, Pastor Kimmy or Pastor um, Kevin, Pastor Sage, Dana, I mean, you know, um, we didn't ask to be called to be pastors or evangelists or apostles or whatever God has you do. We didn't ask for that because one of the things I learned as a young Christian, which I didn't even really understand the word, but I understood this, was that you can be more strictly judged. And I was like, no, I ran. Ah, <laughs> uh -uh, God, I ain't going to be more strictly judged than that person. I probably got just as much sins. <laughs> and, you know, but God called me anyway, and I still ran. 
and he caught up. Well, he never lost me. I thought he did. I thought I ran fast enough, and then when I got there, he was still there. <laughs> and then they got busy. I said, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm going to do this. You know, I, I remember just volunteering. Me and my husband volunteered for everything in the church. Oh, oh yeah, okay, we're going to do this. I mean, like, oh, we're going we're gonna to sing on the worship team. You know how to sing. Well, I thought you guys was worshipers. I don't know how to sing, but, you know, I don't have a voice, but I am a worshiper. You know, I love Jesus. And um, so we went up and worshiped. What, why? Because we had a, a zeal. We had a compassion for the Lord. We wanted to do what made him happy, what, what pleased the Lord. We just wanted to do it. I didn't want to position in anything else. So I, we kind of was Jonas at the same time. We kind of was hiding out. But in the same time, God was teaching us just like Joseph. Stage. He had a stages in his life that he had to go through. And, and while we were running, you know, he didn't run. They, they just shoved him into the pit. <laughs> you know, and I think maybe we're shoved a little bit. But we, we were running. As we were running, God still was there, you know. And then he, he's like, okay, I'm going to push them into the worship team. And then the um, music guy in the back, the pastor says, oh, I, you know, the mics went off. Me and my husband's mic went off. And the mics are off. And he's like, um, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, he did it on purpose, right? Um, <laughs> we didn't meet man's standards, okay? So I don't know what man's standards is, you know, but we didn't meet man's standards, and we weren't there to please man. We were there to please God, and so we're like, ah, never mind. We just sing without the mic. So we didn't go sit down and get mad. We, like, just shout it out, you know. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. Come on, come on, come on. Let's praise Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I did not care <laughs> because it pleased the Lord. And, and that's what, you know, prophecy is all about, pleasing the Lord from the inside out. You know, and, and so God's going to take you. And I'm, I'm so glad she, she just did all of that. Thank you, Lord. He just changed the whole message. I mean, you know, I know teachers are in the house, so I was good. I did a lot of work. I was showing you my homework. <laughs> and I got more than that, you know. I got some more there. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I'm just a different breed. God just works in me differently. And then my husband used to get so upset with me because... I, like, I study, and I, I do what I need to do, and then he's like, okay, what are you ministering on tomorrow? And then I show him my notes, and I got, like, this one scripture. And he's like, so where's your notes? I said, that is my notes. And he's like, that's your notes? And, like, when he studies, he, like, got a whole booklet, you know, all these pages and all these points and everything. And I'm like, I don't know. That's all God said. I don't have anything else. I can't add it anything and I can't subtract anything because if I subtract I have nothing to say and if I add I might get confused so I just got to hang with God <laughs> and so you know that's just the way he works in me but you know you still got to study to show yourself approved it's just that for me he that's how he does it he just gives me sometimes like that you know but now he's teaching me something new you know he's like okay you better write some notes down you know so I got that. But what I'm saying is that um, I, I did kind of like, um, it was like on-the-job training with the Holy Ghost. But we need the teachers. But at that moment, God knew that I didn't have teachers in my path. God knew that I didn't have anyone that, that would be able to mentor me. Because, you know, living in where I'm living now, you know, being a woman, most of the people out there, the churches out there, don't like women pastors. Nobody likes to join us. We even wanted to join them for, for Easter, you know, the sunrise service. And you guys cannot come because you're a woman pastor. And so, but it's okay, people, because I still love them. I pray for them because, you know, it's sad. You know, it's sad. You got you know, that, that, you know, I pray that God will reveal to them his doctrine, you know. And that's what you got to pray for. Can't get offended. I don't get offended. Because you know why? It's all about Jesus. I mean, you're not pleasing me. You're pleasing him. And so whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. And so um, 
but I love the Lord, you know, in that way when, when he does things. And, um, you know, just um, running from him, him and going into um, worship and them turning off the mics. And we still praise the Lord. We please the Lord because we didn't get offended. How many of you, when you're like, I got a word from the Lord, and the pastor says, well, you know, that, that, that spirit that is, is subject to the prophet, so you just sit down and wait. Oh, how many of you guys like, oh, what? They let so-and-so go. What about me? You know, and walk out because you're offended. Well, the pastor will know what's going to come out of you sometimes because they know, you know, just, you know, God is testing your attitude, yeah. you know. Because, I mean, that is um, flesh gratifying. When, when you get offended in, in not a, being able to be used and, and, and prophesy when the pastor says, wait, you know, then, then it's your, your flesh that wants to be gratified. You're either gratifying your flesh or you're glorifying God. Yeah. Glorifying God is to be respectful, honoring the man and woman of God, you know, um, honoring you know, the timing that, and the seasons that God has placed in your life. You know, just because you, you got a word, you know, did you pay a price for it? I mean, maybe we saw Joseph and we saw that he bragged about having a dream and then we saw the end of his life and, and what he gave. Oh, uh, oh, I got one word and I'm going to be here. But we, you know, you never went to the process, you know, and so... Many men and women of God have paid a price, you know, for, for, for all of you, you know. And so, you know, I always say this to our congregation, listen. I'm, I'm in Ocean View, okay, so listen. They don't listen. <laughs> when the tents, the wind blow right through, go right through the ears, you know, in and out. Listen, you know, when the Spirit of God is speaking, you got to listen, you have to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Can you hear me now? So my word is desire. Can you hear me now? So a lot of us, we kind of hear the Lord. You know, it's like we have a desire, but we don't have a hearing ear. You know, and we're like, well, who Pastor Kimmy thinks she is? Her husband's so nice, but look at her. <laughs> 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 who you think you are? Girl, who you think you are? So they stay in the mirror at home like, yeah, I'm just keep me. You know you, huh? And then when they come, praise the Lord. Right. Yeah. And they dealt with other keep me at home. You know you. <laughs> in the mirror. No. But um, where do you think um, you learn to be humble? You know, it's, it's when God brings a leader before you to teach you. Yeah. If you. If you're unteachable, why are you be even in church? I mean, it's like, there's no place in church for you. You have to remain teachable. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in whatever stage you're at, just learn. I mean, I mean, that was my biggest thing, like I told you guys last night about, you know, being in school. And it's just because, not because I wasn't, I was stupid or I didn't want to learn. It's just because... I, I, my life when I was a, a young child, I was sickly and, and I missed a lot of schooling. And so, you know, I wasn't up to the standards of my grade, you know, but um, God knew that, you know. It wasn't a fault that I, it wasn't something I chose, but it was, a, I believe that now when I look back at that, it was like, thank you, Jesus, that you separated me, you know, from the things of the world. And then he, he could become my best friend. So if you were in school and you was popular, you used to having a lot of people around you, a lot of friends around you. You know, and so you depend on them. You seek out their advice, their opinions, you know. And um, I, I was blessed because I didn't have all that. So, you know, when I did find the Lord, then I, I got to seek him, you know, because he was the only one there, you know. Um, and I'm pretty much that way. I mean, I have friends. Um, I have friends all over, I guess. I don't even know their names half the time. I, can't really <laughs> I go into stores and I do this live, and they're like, oh, Pastor Pam. And I'm like, trying to think, okay, where was 
Then the women's ministry, why, you know. And they go, no, no, we watch your life. But I don't always see your names, you know. But they know me so well, you know, because they watch these lives and they listen. And it's like they be, I became friends with them, you know. And so, um, you know, we, we're friends. If you're a friend with Jesus, people will want to be your friend. Where Jesus is lifted up, all men shall be drawn unto him. And so you got to lift up Jesus in your life because I'm going to say, if you want to prophesy, Jesus better be your best friend. You know, you got to allow him to speak. Because when he speaks, people he listen. You know, what is that thing, the one that, the one that speaks? What, what was that commercial? The, the financial one. Yeah, I forget what it was. Oh, when EF, yeah, EF Hutton speaks, everyone listens. But when Jesus speaks, not everybody listens. And so you got to have a desire. And I, I'm, I'm building up that desire in you to want more of him. You know, you want to prophesy, you got to build, you got to hunger, you got to thirst, you got to want more. So, you know, I want to encourage you to build that desire in you to want more of him. Don't want more of the gift. The gift is already given. The gift is given. It's how you use the gift. It's whose voice is speaking. Yeah. Boy, sometimes someone, um, some people can do a prophecy. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, Ooh, what was that? <laughs> and if you're like, <laughs> if you don't have, <laughs> if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, you're going to like, oh, she's speaking in tongues. <laughs> I received that. You know, but the demon, you can have a demon in you. I don't care if you say you're in Christian for 30 years, you still can have a demon in you. Because, you know, God, even when we were yet sinners, saved us. So when he saved us, we were sinners, so we still had, you know, ugly things in us. We still had demons in us of the past. And so maybe that demon is coming out. <laughs> so you need discernment. So you, you, that's why you need a relationship with the Lord. Take him serious, people. You know, but also, you know, honor, you know, I'm going to say, he says, honor your mother and your father, yeah? You know why? Because, you know, that pleases God, and you, know, you can live a long life. Well, your, your spiritual parents is your mother and your father also. Honor them. You might not like the way they do things, but if God, you know, placed you with them, you know, there's a reason, and it's like Joseph. There's a reason why, you know, he was put into the pit. You know, there's a reason why when he went to Potiphar's house, you know, all that um, drama happened. How many of you guys got drama in your life, right? You know, he ran. I know you want to run too. You know? <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, he went to seasons of his life that didn't look good. And we're all going through seasons. There's a season that you're going through right now that you think, Lord, solve this problem. Okay, and he says, no, you do it. I gave you authority, gave you power. You, you do it. We always want to sit there and let God do everything, or we want to sit there and, you know, tell the pastors every week the same story, you know, and you don't even know that they got one of those, um, what is that, there's earbuds in their ear, they're listening to music while, while you're talking, and when you're done, they go, mm. they're actually jamming to the music. Mm. Because <laughs> it's the same song. Get over that stage. Get over the victim mentality. You know, we're not victims. We're victorious. And so I, I'm encouraging you to have a desire to hunger for more. My husband and, and I had such a desire that um, from the worship team, you know, we did the worship team, not too many people in the church, and then we, we, we did uh, the offerings, you know, and then we ended up doing a clown ministry with the big hair and the outfit and the big shoes and the clown face. Like, Lord, you sure this what you like us to? And it's like, I remember going to an um, Assembly of God's church at Red Hill. We was obedient. And we was to prophesy the word because... There's a vision. We, they're talking about vision for, it was all pastors, all leaders. It was jam-packed with 
uh, pastors and leaders from all the churches of Assembly of God. And we got up there, and it's like, you got to be ready. And we got up, and it's like, okay, we're going to do our skit. We had a skit. Brought a boy, honey girl. I was honey girl. He has brought a boy. He was a Kalohi one. I was a good one. And um, we get up there. My, my husband is like, he's like, figure he's 6'2", you know, 250 or 60 pounds. And he's in a clown outfit. That kind of already looks weird, okay? <laughs> Scary clown. <laughs> okay? But you got to do what God said to do, right? We're obedient. We ready. We zealous for the Lord. Anything you like us to do, Lord. And then, so we go there, and he, all of a sudden, well, how many of you guys know? I just couldn't say it. I'm going to be real. You know, a lot of them would look so starchy that they were stiff. You know, so when you get up front and you see all the stiff people looking at you, you know, like this, like, what is that? You know, what? Clown. No. They found everything to <laughs> negative, right? And my husband got up and I got up and it's like, my husband was like this. <laughs> and I'm standing there like, Come on. So even when you prophesy, sometimes you can have that stage fright, right? You, God can tell you, go talk to them. And you go, I can do it. You go over there, and it's like you're ready to talk. And then all of a sudden, you're like. <laughs> so my, my husband is like that. And I'm like, okay, you better start because you're supposed to start first. I mean, we get all these people looking at us, and they don't look like they're kind. Okay? I feel like I'm going to riot soon. <laughs> and so he did not. He stood there, I don't know how many minutes. He was like, <laughs> with his big, colorful hair. And then, and then in my heart, uh, Lord, Lord, you got to do something. Get him going. Well, how many of you, you the flesh took over. How many of you know that the flesh sometimes going to take over you? You know? And you go like, and they go look at you like, what? And you're like, you know. And it's so funny because then God told me, and then he spoke to my heart, and he says, well, he had me do something. Who brought a boy. Brought a boy was what else? Uh, brought a boy. Oh, look at all that people brought a boy. We just have to blend it in, people. Blend it in. Go with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Brother boy. Oh, they scary, yeah, brother boy. Brother boy. I think they think us shevice. Maybe they like eat us. You know, <laughs> Holy Ghost get one, one humor. You know, he got a humor. And it kind of was melting the chef ice on my husband, you know. <laughs> and he was like, and just God had me going, and then, I don't know, I was just being funny. And I'm not the funny one, but I don't know why. I was the funny one. And then all of a sudden, he awoken. <laughs> the flesh left. And he was back in the spirit. And now he's looking at me like, I'm ready. <laughs> and God just changed, uh, you know, well, uh, how we're going to do everything. I became the funny one, and he had to be the serious one. How many of you know he don't know how to be serious? He liked to play around all the time. And God just changed our roles. And so sometimes God's going to work in your heart and change. You might be a funny person. God going to have you be serious at times. Maybe you're a serious person, and then you're going to be doing funny things. You know, but it's the Holy Spirit. He has a character. He has a personality. He is a person. And, and so, you know, he, he's got to, because sometimes, I'm going to just say, as some of you, um, God looks at you, and, and, and like those people in the church, you know, and that, I'm going to tell you, it was an AG church way back when. And, oh, my God, somebody used too much starch today. <laughs> right? <laughs> my mother-in-law used to like to iron. And... Everything, like, had creases. Even my husband's BVDs had creases. 
Ano jokyu. Like she could put the pants and it would stand up. And then one day she came to her house and my husband, I don't iron, okay? I just don't iron. And she says, oh, so my son is going to work like that? I go, like what? With that shirt? Yeah, that's the work shirt. You see? Aloha Airlines. <laughs> and she says, it's not ironed. I go, oh, yeah. Should have told this you um should have told you earlier. My mom said, if it's not perma press, throw it away. <laughs> so you know, whatever is starchy in your life, get rid of. Yeah. Too much work. Yeah. You gotta use starch, too much work. If you're working at it so hard, then it's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Spirit. Your desire got to be more than just loving the gift. Your desire got to be for Jesus. Because he's the one ultimately going to change your personality at the moment. I mean, um, when he wants to use you, you know, like I remember this pastor. Preached everything the Bible says, but he didn't believe everything the Bible said. And the evangelist came. Oh, my God. He didn't believe in the holy laughter, but yet the youth group was operating in the holy laughter. And, <laughs> and this, this evangelist came and prayed on him. Oh, my God. I don't know if you guys saw Back to the Future, that, um, that um, scientist, what was his name? You know, the, the one drove that car, Back to the Future. And this guy was dignified. Yeah, he had got nice hair, you know, everything in place, plenty of um, hairspray. He wasn't bending in, but he kind of looked like it. You know, that stiff hair. But he was so perfect. And how many of us try to be so perfect that we miss out on what God is saying to us? We're so worried about what we look like to others that, you know, we're not listening to God. We're listening to what they're saying. And then we can't even operate in our gifts because we, we're so concerned about someone else and what they're saying. And if you're doing that, you're not desiring, you know, the Lord to work in your heart. And so desire, what is desire? Let me know when I get up now. To desire in the scriptures usually means to long for, to ask for, to demand. I mean, you desire something, you got to demand. De demand an encounter with the Lord. Demand of yourself to, to be selfless. Demand that everything that your wants and your needs is no longer, but it's God. You demand yourself. We always like to demand every, everyone else, especially husbands and wives. Especially wives. No, especially husbands. I always like demand their wives. Nah, we just say, <laughs> I got to choose the, the women, yeah. But anyway. You got to demand for the anointing of God. You got to demand, you know, for more of God in your life. You know, you got to put a demand on the anointing of God to work in your life. If you don't put a demand on the anointing, but we're like, oh, I just want the gift. Well, without the anointing, the gift doesn't matter. Jesus is the anointed one. In Psalms tw um, 27, 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord that, um, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. You know that there's so much beauty when you behold him? And to inquire in his temple. It's like inquiring in, in the presence of the Lord. You know, and, and I, could, I can already feel this house being filled up. I'm talking about we are the temple of the living Holy Spirit, you know. But I'm talking about this house also. You know, so many changes are happening in this house. I mean, God's going to change personalities, characters. Um, but I, I already feel the presence of the Lord. You know, the presence means a lot. Because when the presence of the Lord is present, then, then things will happen. Changes will happen. So we, you know, you can have the power, but without the presence, it don't mean anything. Because you know what, the devil got the power too. He got the power to do signs and wonders, and there's gonna be signs and wonders that's gonna happen in the last day. That people are gonna follow after after the signs and wonders that, but they're not seeking after the relationship 
and the oneness with God. They're seeking after the gifts and the abilities and everything else that God already gave us, but they're not seeking out the Lord. And so we need to have that intimacy with the Lord. And you know what? It starts with you individually. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You, you, you better put your seat belts on. And you, you guys, you know, make no more excuses about, oh, I can't be at church on Sunday. I can't be at church on the Bible. You know, you make time. Because you make time for everything else. You make time. Someone is, is in trouble. Say, listen, I'm going to pick you up because we got church tonight. You know, I'm not going to solve your problem. We'll take you to church because Jesus is there. Yeah. He's going to solve it, not me. And so, you know what? Instead of making excuses about I got to do this and I got to do that. No, go out and be the evangelist that God says you are and bring them to church. Yeah. Amen? The churches are empty because why? Because we're not doing our work in the church. See, if you are prophesying the word of God because you have a relationship with the Lord, you would know that wherever you go, you preach the word and they will come. And so you got to double yourself, triple yourself, you know, quadruple yourself, you know. And, and I tell you, it's not the pastor's job to go out and do all of that. Their job is to equip you. Your job is to go and bring in. But, you know, I, I think the church got so lazy in a way where they depend on the, the leaderships of the church to do all the work, you know, and, 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 and do nothing. It's time that you awaken. God is awakening the church because to awaken the church is to give them a desire for more of God. God wants you to hunger after him, thirst after him, want more of him, demand more of him. Amen. Hebrews 12, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. So don't turn away from the God that speaks. Don't turn away because um, you don't want to have a hearing ear because someone said something that you got offended. If you're getting offended, that's a good thing, people. It's a good thing because something was touched in you that needs to change. But if you're unwilling to change that that you're offended of, means that you're unteachable. If you're unteachable, then how can you have this intimacy with the Lord? Amen. Whose voice then shook the earth. God's voice, when he speaks from heaven, the earth shakes. That means when we go forth in, 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 in speaking the word of God, you know, him living in us, him abiding in us, us abiding in him, when we open our mouths, the earth will shake. Can you imagine all of you guys going out and shaking up this community, shaking up your household? It's like just speaking the word of God because you one with him that, you know what? They're, I mean, what are they going to say? All I know is, wow, that's Jesus. You're going to shake up some people's lives. And that's what we're meant to do. Go out and shake up this world for Jesus. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. So God is wanting to shake some things out of you. Can you imagine somebody coming and grabbing you like, ah! and you're like, you know, are you demon possessed? I don't know, but something's being shaken out of you. God's shaking you. I remember um, when not really understanding the spirit of God. I remember when, I, when God came and shook me up. It's like things came out of me. Things came out of me that wasn't good. It needed to be. Sh I didn't know. It was there for so long that God had to loosen it up in me. Yeah. I mean, we got things in us for so long. Unforgiveness or, or whatever it might be, you know, self-pity, whatever it is. You, it, God got to shake you up so it can be loosened. So you know why? It can be revealed to you. Because you're not listening. I mean, Joseph, his life had to be shaken up. <laughs> <laughs> at an early age, at 17. I mean, that's not an early age to God because God already knew us when he put us in our mother's womb. 
So from the time we were even in a mother's womb, there was already a plan and purpose in place for all of us. And now we only have to walk it out. Man gave a legal age, 18, you know. You know, you can do this at 18, but you cannot do this at, um, you know, 21. <laughs> you know, man put, you know, um, stipulations on age. And then it says, but also heaven, okay. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Oh, my gosh. We got, still got things in us that hasn't come out yet. We're not perfect people. We're imperfectly perfect. We're imperfectly perfect because we got the perfect one living in us. But yet we still got that sin nature that want to gratify the flesh. And so we, we, we're like sheep for the slaughter. You know, every day, it's like, I don't want to do this. But like Paul said, he didn't want to do this, but he still does it. You know, we fight. It's like God tells me to do something, and I'm like fighting with my flesh. My flesh telling me, you're so stupid. Everybody going to look at you. You know, go ahead, do it, you know. And uh, so you got this battle going on in your own flesh. No one else sees it. You got your mind here, and then you got battlefield in your mind. And, and you got to defeat that, you know, what the enemy is saying. But it's a battle. You know, but when you got the word in you, that word is a sword. It penetrates, right? And, and so, you know, that's why we need the word of God. That's why we need more of Jesus. That's why we need fellowship with the saints. He says, do not forsake the fellowship of saints. You know what is happening in this world? So many people are thinking, I don't need to go to church. God knows. I good. I can stay home. No, he says, do not forsake the fellowship of saints. Fellowship means one-on-one. -on -one. You know today's world, they're on this, this little phones, and they, they, they have contact with, with computers, and they don't know who a human is. You need to be here live, live, not on just on live. I do live to encourage people. There's some people in the hospital. You know, there's people in places that they cannot leave their homes. But I take the word. But that's not for them. That's not their responsibility. They're there where, where they're at, you know. But those that, that can drive, those that, that can go out, they, those are the ones God is talking to. You got feet. You can walk, you know. Catch the bus, you know. Just get to where you need to go to, but just don't go to a dead church. That's all I say. Yeah. I'm not talking about churches. I'm just talking about if Jesus doesn't live there. I mean, can you imagine coming to a church, coming up the stairs, and here you go, a guy sitting there, and it's like, oh, you're not going in the church, bro. He go, oh, no, they're not going to let me in. And they come in, you sit down, you go through the service. Wow, I never feel anything. Nothing happened. You go out, the guy's still sitting out there, and it's like, brah, you still here? He go, yeah, I'm still waiting. What you waiting for? I'm waiting for them to invite me in. That's the Holy Ghost. So God will never leave us or forsake us, but he's waiting on us. Because he's, he's not, uh, he's a gentleman. You know, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He won't just barge his way in, but he waits for an invitation to come in. Amen. So you can have a service, but I don't know who you're serving. By grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence. How do we serve God? With reverence and godly fear. Well, and that, that's, you, you want the gift? Get Jesus. You know, they got, used to have that um, poster, yeah? got milk, right? Got milk, got milk. Oh, you got to put a big one on the church. Got Jesus? I mean, make them think about it. Got Jesus? They're like, what? Got Jesus? No. So reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Ooh, wow, we always say, ooh, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> Lift me higher. You know, we like the fire, right? We love the fire. But the thing is, God wants to fan the flame, the gift God has given you. God has given you a gift. 
He wants to fan that, that gift, you know, and that's why you have leaders. There's some that God called to the five-fold ministry. Not everybody that is up there is in a five-fold ministry. You know, when God says, go and um, heal the sick, but yet God says there's a gift of healing. So somebody might have this healing gift, but yet we all still are enabled by the Spirit of God to go out and heal the sick. Because he said, go and heal the sick. And then he says, you know what? Um, some have the, the gift of, of, of the signs and wonders. And then, but God says to all of us, go and raise the dead. All of us. We are not excluded. You know, and cast out demons. My husband used to tell me, oh, okay, mom. Um, I love to do that kind of stuff. But go and he's like, okay, mom, listen. I stand right here behind you. I got you. I got your back. <laughs> because some of them, like, their eyes, like, flip, and they got this stench like they did, you know, and they growl at you. They do nasty stuff, but they cannot touch you. I don't fear those things because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. But you got to know who you are because, you know, the devil knows who you are, Right? Who he said, who was that? Paul, Peter. Paul, I know of. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know of, but Jesus, I know. But who are you? Oh, and beat them silly. Beat them up, naked. Running down the street, naked. You know why? Because they, they, they went clothed with the garment of praise. They went clothed, you know, with God's anointing. They went out on their own. They wanted to be these ghostbusters. You know, like, dun, 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 dun. you know, going, I don't know how the song goes. But you go out and, and you try to do things like, oh, no. Do not forsake the fellowship of saints. You want to get equipped, hang with the anointed ones. The ones that paid the price. The ones that dug those wells. The ones like Joseph that went through all this hardship that you didn't see, but God knows of. They paid a price to be where they're at. And at the end, what? Take my bones, what? Right? Bury them somewhere else. Bury them in the promised land, okay? I don't get to go there, but can you take my bones there? My dream. <laughs> take my bones there, but I can't go. But I did all of this, but it's all good because I love Jesus. But see, our reward is in heaven, people. And so when we look to heaven, we know that's where our reward is. So you want to prophesy. You want to raise the dead. You want to heal the sick. You want to um, bind out the, uh, and cast out demons. Then guess what? You guys got to have Jesus. You got Jesus? Amen? And it says, in my distress, Psalms 18.6, I called upon the Lord. Who are you calling on? I called upon the Lord in my distress. I called upon, I was desperate. That's a desire when you're desperate. You really get one desire. I know people who don't even love Jesus and deny Jesus, but when something serious happens, they call up. They get desperate. They're in distress. They call up. Pastor, you can come pray. You know, so and so sick. My mom's sick. My wife's sick. Please come. Please come. They're in distress. They're calling out to the Lord. And of course we go. You know, but in the times of distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Your voice. The voice of triumph. The voice of victory. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Wow. When we prophesy the word of God, you know what? That voice goes straight up to the ears of God. Either he pleased or displeased, depending where your heart is at. But it goes straight up to the, the Lord hears. We think God is um, um, deaf. Can you hear me now? See, can you hear me now? Oh, but I guess when you come to church and you, then, then you start um, listening to your pastor, you start being obedient, and you start learning new things. Oh, Lord, can you hear me now? You know that phone, what is that, at and Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And then, you know, 
And then one day you hear, God says, can you hear me now? <laughs> See, we, we wanna, we're thinking like, God, you're not hearing us, but God is saying, you need to hear me. Amen. You know, we want it to work the opposite way. We want him to hear us. Yeah, he hears us. It just said that in the scripture, that he hears us, that he says, and my cry, our cry came before him, even into his ears. That means he heard us. He went into his ears. I mean, God got big ears, you know. He's a big God. So I know he heard it, you know. And so a hunger and thirst to go deeper. And we just talked about deeper, you know, deeper. We got to go deeper. We got to go deeper into our relationship with the Lord. But see, that will never happen for you if you don't seek ye the kingdom of God first. All these things will be added unto you, but God has called some. Your pastors are some. If you know that they love Jesus Christ with all their heart, soul, mind, and all their strength, and love others as their, themselves, then there's some. That God called them. And who are you to say when you never paid a price to be where they're at? Who are you to say, you know, um, and look at all the faults. They man, I man, you know, hello. You're going to see a lot of flaws in me. But that's not your job to judge me. It's my, my, your job to help me. It's your job to pray for me. It's your, your job to encourage me. It's your job to build me up. But see, and that's what pastors are equipped to do. They're equipped, you know, to equip you. Equip you in knowing who Jesus Christ is in your life. They're equipped to build you in the gifts that God has for you. Because if any... When you get a prophecy from somewhere else and they say, oh, you're in China, and it's like, wow, Pastor, I go and leave uh, next week. I'm going. You can take my offering up for me <laughs> because I need a little bit extra money. I'm going next week. I got my word. I go in China. And then your pastor sits you down. You got to sit after church. Let's talk. And says, listen, you know, that could be in the future, but you're not prepared yet. But you're here because God put you in our house to prepare you. And if he can call you out to be a missionary, then let us be part of your life. Let us make, let us, our fruit, make you even more fruitful. You know. And so when we start learning to respect, you know, the men and women that God has called out on your behalf, that you don't see the in-betweens of their lives. My, my husband and I was together all the time, 24-7. But I enjoyed it. And there's times I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> you know? But I love the guy, you know? And, and um, I think when God gave me him, he gave me the most imperfectly perfect gift. And I'm satisfied. And now I can do God's work until the day I go home. You know? Um, now I have more of a hunger and thirst. And just like my sister back there, 40 years old, and no children, but yet, you know, I honor you, you know, 40 years old and not having children and, you know, seeking the Lord. And, man, you're such a good teacher of the word. I have to say, you know, you're so organized. I so disorganized, you know. But we both the same, you know, same spirit. But <laughs> I can just write off of your hard work. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> I just wanted to honor you as um, such a young person. And um, God has so much planned for you. And you have stripped yourself. You, you have laid bare in front of the Lord on these altars, naked before the Lord, you know, um, unashamed, you know, just naked before the Lord. And, Lord, this is everything. This is me. I have nothing else, you know. Even this that I'm offering you, I feel like is unworthy. But yet, Lord, if you can use this, then here I am. And... Um, I see um, such an anointing upon your life. Um, you got good teachers. And, and I got to say one thing. The reason why people can say, oh, that's the golden child. Um, you know, you always, people always think, oh, that's the golden child. Oh, that's the, no, that's not. You know what that is? That's someone that hungers and thirsts after Jesus. That's the ones that runs with the anointing. You know, where you go, I go. And they go over there. Oh, where you go, I go. You know, grab the teapot and make the tea for somebody, and then they walk away. 
Where you go, I go. <laughs> you know, but what you guys need from me? Anything? I'll do it for you. You know, willing to um, have self-control of their own flesh, willing to go through the long sufferings, but willing to be obedient in what the Lord has called them out to do. And so when you speak, my sister, I got to tell you, when you speak, it's like um, heaven's voice because it comes from a pure heart. And so I just wanted um, just to encourage you because God said, um, you know, and even if times that um, sometimes we feel lonely, sometimes we feel like, well, am I making the right choice in life? You know, because, man, everybody got families. Maybe that, that's my destiny. Maybe this is my destiny. But no, you know, you just be like, um, you know, Naomi and Ruth. And, and Ruth is like, no, where you go, you, I go. Your people is my people, you know. <laughs> you love them, I love them. You know, love them? I got to think about that. <laughs> that. That one you got to watch out for, yeah? <laughs> nah. Rough one. <laughs> I just sing, you know, um, to love God. I'm just going to do, um, see, I did all of this, but I'm just going to pass a lot of things. So crying out to God is an act of desperation and total concentration. It is a fervent expression of faith in God and trust in his goodness and power to act on your behalf. Crying out to God expresses the following traits. Genuine humility, which is talked about. Unconditional surrender. That means, that means unconditional surrender, people. Not like I came to church and I'm like, okay, Lord, I surrender this. No, unconditional surrender means a daily lifestyle of surrender. Waking up in the morning and says, Lord, here I am. Bushy hair, stink bread. Here I am. You know, I, I surrender to you that this day is yours. You know, just lead me and guide me. Um, a plea for mercy. That's in Lamentations 3, 22, 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So every morning, is, it's new. Every morning, we, we got to be in the total surrender. Personal helplessness. Because without you, Lord, we can do nothing. John 15, 5. Faith in God's power and resources. You know he has a lot of resources, yeah? Lord, save us or we perish. Desperation. That's in need of God. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice. See, knowing that he hears our voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. And that's Psalms 18.6. But the greatest of all of this is Matthew 22, 30, 39. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbors as yourself. If any word that I can leave with you would be the commandments of God. It's a commandment to live that way. It was a commandment to, to love God that way. With all your heart. Where's your heart today? All your soul. Where's your soul today? Where's your emotions? What are you thinking about? McDonald's? All your mind. I mean, our minds wander. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder who. <laughs> wrote the book of love <laughs> and all your strength but Lord I am so weary like Ezekiel I mean like um, Elijah I'm so weak I'm so tired and can you see your pastors with a smile on praising the Lord doing all of this because they're obedient to God but yet at moments they can be like you know, Elijah in that cave, like, Lord, I just cannot get out of bed. Lord, I am, I am so tired. Lord, I just feel so rejected when people come against them. Lord, I, I feel so hurt for, for these people that they, they, the words are falling on deaf ears. You know, Lord, I don't know what more to do. 
Don't discourage your leaders. Because when you do, you discourage God. It's called disobedience. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So if you learn love, you will learn everything that the Holy Spirit wants you to learn. You will learn to prophesy and speak to, to, to your neighbors, speak to your husband. Because I don't know what you're saying to your husbands. I don't know what you're saying to your wives. I don't know what words are coming out of your mouth. But if you learn that love is the greatest, then we need to humble ourselves. And so um, oh, I pray that you guys all got this word today. Um, I love this activation. This is my, my picture. As soon as I came out here and had the crowd, I, it like stood out to me like it just shines. So I ran on this side and I like grabbed it. I said, that's mine. And I had such a, a good, um, you know, prophetic word, you know, on this picture, you know, about the footsteps in the sand. Thank you. And um, I didn't notice the shadow, but, you know, he brought the shadow out. And then I, I, I remember like Peter's shadow. Wherever he went, healing took place. Miracles happened. Do you know that you don't really have to do a lot if you're full of Jesus? That when you walk, that the shadow alone will deliver people as you walk past them? You know, and so thank God for this. So I, I do have an activation. Um, can you pass that out? And um, many of us um, are waiting for our word from God, right? And so with the love that you guys received today and with the words that you guys heard this week, um, love, you know, conquered all. Everything was about the love of God. And so um, those are Valentine's cards. And I hope you guys got pens or pencils, if not got some up front. Um, so I want you guys to write on the envelope a message from God. So if you guys can write on the envelopes a message from God. On the envelope, on the top of the envelope, a message from God. Because you know that God always sends us messages from heaven, right? A message from God. And after you write that message, God's going to speak to your heart. So, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, that you intervened, Lord. Lord, everyone heard your word, and, Lord, they, 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 they just heard how much you love them. And, Lord, everybody is here that is wanting to hear from you a special message, a, a message of encouragement, a, a message um, of love, a message of peace, just a message, just something, Lord, that they need in their situation right now, a message that will take them, you know, from where they're at to where they need to be. So, Lord, just bless them right now, Lord. Give them wisdom in their minds, Lord, in Jesus' name. And so... You guys all got Bibles right in front of you, yeah? And thank God for that church. I got Bibles in front of them. So I'm going to ask you that um, God's speaking to you, and you need to write a scripture. It can be a short scripture. It doesn't have to be so long, people. Write a scripture in that envelope, in, in the card. In the card, write down the scripture. And if it's long, just write the title of the scripture, because they can go in the Bible and look what it says. So, but if short, just write it out and, you know, and then put love Jesus. Okay. God's prophetically speaking to you guys right now. He's activating your prophetic gift because it's coming from his heart to your heart, to someone else's heart. So you know when you guys all did this and, and brought this up here to the altars? This is you inquiring of God.
Do you guys know that we are the mailmans? Hmm? That we deliver mail. We, when we prophesy, you know, it's going to heaven, yeah? We speak to him, and then he delivers back to us. So you seek the Lord first, you know, before we go out and do what God's called us to do. We, before we even speak a word, we go to the Lord, you know, and then he delivers the mail. And so, it's not Vegas, but I'm going to shuffle the envelopes. <laughs> and so, you, de you delivered the mail, and now God's going to deliver a letter back to you. And so whatever word you got in here is your answer. And so, um, I'm going to ask that you guys all come in. The first card that's on the top is the, the card that you pick, okay? So why don't you guys come up and get a card, and that's going to be your word from, from God. <laughs> 